Hello everyone, uh, my name is Rodney Alone. I'm a junior physics major at St. Olaf College, and today I'll be explaining the dynamic stabilization of a vertically driven inverted pendulum. Um, for those who do not know what that is, it is a pendulum whose, whose fixed point is allowed to be driven up and down at a given frequency. Um, we'll examine the physical behavior of this phenomenon. Um, this video will have four parts. It'll have my introduction and the physical example. It'll have the math. It'll have the high-speed footage and a uh, computer simulation, which I will make available um, in the description. Uh, but anytime you want to skip to any of these sections, uh, feel free to do so. There are links in the description with the timestamps and a link to just skip right to that part. All right, and uh, here we go. Okay, so now we're going to look at the uh, the physical representation. You can see this is a uh, Craftsman reciprocating saw, sawzaw. Um, it's mounted to the driving piston. Uh, well, you can see this. Um, and that'll allow us to drive the support of the pendulum up and down. Um, you can see there's very little damping in the system. It's uh, freshly greased, it falls really easily. If I put it as straight up as I can get it, it still falls off to the side. And you know, it behaves just like you'd expect a normal pendulum to behave. But when we drive it at a high frequency, we get some interesting behavior that we're going to examine. So here we go. So as we can see, the pendulum is able to stabilize itself in an inverted position. And then if we start to slow the driving frequency down, you can see it's starting to fall. And if we slow it down low enough, it'll fall all the way down until we raise the driving frequency back up uh, enough to stabilize the pendulum. This is actually a very robust um, stability position. You see we can hit it, not miss, hit it, and it comes right back to the equilibrium position at the top. Um, so this is a very robust system, and we can hit it almost all the way down to beta of pi over 2, and it'll come all the way back up. Uh, we'll take a look at the high speed footage now. As we can see, the pendulum is able to right itself all the way from being in the down position. Um, and it does so in almost a stepwise manner. You can see every time the piston draws down, the tip of the pendulum goes up a little bit more. And it only falls just a hair as the pendulum, the base of the pendulum, pushes back up. Um, we'll examine this feature of this system in, um, in greater detail with the simulations at the end especially, but with the math um, coming up soon in the video. Um, as you can see, the pendulum gets all the way over and it is able to stabilize itself and not just go into one of the higher spinning modes if it were um, driven too fast and did not have enough damping in the system. So we're going to look at what would happen if um, someone hit it as I was doing earlier in real time, now with the, the high speed footage, um, we can see the pendulum getting displaced. And we can see the robustness of the system as it falls quite a ways to the side and is still able to come all the way back up to center. And we'll work through the math, um, set up the Lagrange equation. Um, and discover why this phenomenon occurs. For the math, we'll be looking at um, a minute physics style um, work through of the problem. So we can see as we set this up, we have a mass on an inverted rod, um, displaced at an angle theta, driven at a set frequency, a cosine of omega t. And we can see the forces acting on it, the force of gravity and the force of the rod pushing up or down, depending on our um, a cosine theta or a cosine omega t. Here we set up the Lagrange equation, potential energy and kinetic energy. And as we can see, um, we're going to get a pretty complicated Lagrange equation. Um, here's the full Lagrangian to which we will apply our um, Euler Lagrange relationship partial with respect to theta minus the time derivative of the partial with respect to the rate of change of theta, and we get an acceleration in theta. And then we use that equation to relate it to potential energy. 
where we get energy effective L cosine theta. And this potential energy will become very important in our next analysis with the simulation. On the right side, we're plotting potential energy versus theta. That's changing with time. And on the left, we're looking at the actual physical representation of the system. Um, right now is being driven at a driving frequency of 10 radians per second. And as we can see, that's not high enough to stabilize the system. Now with the driving frequency of 100 radians per second, we can see if the system is stable. Um, looking at the energy analysis on the right, we can see as the energy changes with time, um, the curve drops all the way above and below the center line. Um, and this is clearly what stabilizes the system. You can also see with the force analysis on the left, the average force over a period is always pointing in the direction that stabilizes the pendulum. Um, neither of these were true with the previous system. The energy analysis you could see was not going above and below the line and the ball was able to fall off.